you get out here and watch all these uh, young kids playing and, and all that kind of? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's always a fun time of the year bringing, uh, you know, with the free agents on top of our prospects just to see, and then to see the progress of some of the prospects that we um, haven't seen as much live during the season. So um, July is a, a tough time to, to be evaluating anything, but I think overall, good start. What have you made of uh, Ronnie Herman's progress? Speaking of a guy in, in that type of a situation, a couple years now since he's been drafted, yeah. what have you noticed from him from then to now? I think he's made significant progress, and um, you know, really, the credit goes goes to Ronnie. He's been very open to the ideas that uh, we've thrown at him from a development staff. Um, changed a little bit about his posture, his stick, his approach to the game, and working a lot with Thomas Pacino over in Europe. Um, he, you know, more confident guy. He's more uh, powerful and explosive. Um, I think he had a very long season last year where they played almost 11 months so he's catching up off the ice in terms of conditioning and training which will be the biggest thing for Ronnie because he's a competitor he's got a good head on him and, um, and sees the ice fairly well. What do you want to see from Nick as he goes to Michigan? Yeah so I think with Nick you know stepping into the NCAA program just to continue uh, you know to be able to make plays at that level to expand his game um, he's he's very explosive he skates while he shoots the puck well it's sort of the the next level of being able to to dominate at the ncaa level and make players around him better every time only one day of course with a guy like houston cow there's a lot of yeah. attention on him what are your first impressions uh you know what i I really like Easton. Um, there's something about him that uh, sort of speaks to. He has an internal fire about him uh, that, uh, you know, the odds of being a smaller player, playing junior B, getting drafted higher than maybe people would have thought. He's uh, a very modest kid from, uh, you know, a, far, a farm boy. So, uh, and, and obviously a lot of credit to him being able to make the London Knights and not only that, but uh, as a 17 year old to kill penalties and play the amount of important minutes that he did at the end of the season. Um, had their team gone to the Memorial Cup, we might've seen an even bigger impact. So he's a player that we really like and he's really easy to work with and open to coaching. It feels like Mike Kester's game took some steps this season. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, we did. I think Mike uh, quietly evolved um, and has evolved into a pretty steady, reliable player there um, at Minnesota. And, and uh, certainly, as uh, you know, we're just watching him out here. His mobility has improved, his strength and, and explosivity, and, and just being able to dominate on the power play and be an important part of their program is key for him. Is a type of need to do to bring his playmaking? I think for Ty, uh, it's not so much about his ability to make plays. We all know he can do that. It's his ability to physically be able to compete every day and uh, to be able to handle the, the pace and uh, the physicality that the American Hockey League brings. Um, he's got a, a really good sense for the game. He's crafty in the way that he approaches. Uh, it'll just be whether he can he can manage with with obviously his undersized player and um, but the what he's been able to do last year in Sarnia was pretty impressive with 100 points. But it's a uh, it's a much different game at the American Hockey League level as you guys know. So he's going to have to be able to play both ends of the ice um, a little bit more than what he did in Sarnia. For a guy like Ronnie coming over from uh, from Finland mm -hmm. to North America now, what do you find to be the biggest uh, challenges? Uh, not only getting to that level, but but coming from overseas. Um, I think the the wider ice surface, not necessarily, is, is um, the, the the smaller ice surface here actually might be more beneficial for the way that Roni plays. He's, uh, I know, on the bigger ice surface, he's not a skater that really lights it up in a in the open ice. But uh, coming out of the corners, the first two or three steps, um, being able to play around the net and play tight is uh, an area where he can excel in. So I think actually the North American game, he doesn't shy away from contact. He he proved in the World Juniors that he's a, He's a competitor and a good leader. Uh, so I think it's just his comfort level. And, and uh, honestly, for him, it's the belief in himself that he's capable of getting to that next level uh, and really digging into that every day. When you view players like Joe Miller and their size as a negative, how can you turn that yeah. size into more of a positive? Well, he's a, I mean, you see it today. He's a great skater, very skillful player. Um, again, I think at the, at the next level for the players that are undersized, it's just their ability to be able to play in the middle of the ice, get to the interior. There, you know, you don't have to make big hits, but you've got to be able to sustain under contact, make plays under pressure, uh, and then not get beaten off pucks. So he's got to be able to be hard on pucks and win battles and, and make players around him better with his, his sense and his smarts. With Fraser, where do you see specific 
We've seen a little bit of growth in him already in terms of his strength and explosivity. I think he's starting to, to fill into the frame that he has, which is a, a pretty good frame to put to put mass on. Uh, you know, his shot is, he's got a really tricky release, a good release, and I think it's just evolving um, uh, his tenacity and his assertiveness and the way he plays the game to be able to dominate more in in just different areas of the game when he steps out on the ice that other players know okay this guy's out there and he can he can hurt us at the whl level so more of a mentality for fraser and then just continuing to you know expand on his physical development what do you see from toby with the marlies and coming into this summer and what do you hope to see from him in the fall yeah so toby uh i mean toby playing up in Olu, a very defensive-minded uh, system that they had this year in Finland. So coming to the Marlies, you know, he talked about just the ability to be able to get up the ice and make plays, and we all know that he's an elite playmaker. He makes a great first pass. Uh, he was able to contribute on the power play and step in um, pretty effectively on the, with the top four D with the Marlies. So I think for him, again, it, uh, it comes down to this very similar to Roni is they play a lot, they skate a lot, but the next step for them will be their physical conditioning and strength to be able to, uh, you know, win retrievals on pucks and handle the, the contact and the physical play that comes at the American Hockey League level. You mentioned yeah. physical play and, and tenacity in terms of that. I don't know, a new organizational kind of thrust to have here? <laughs> not, not really. Um, it's, it's, always, it's always been there. Um, you know, maybe I'm talking more about it because you're asking me about players who need that. Um, and, it, you know, it's pretty obvious we have some undersized players here that I think for the next level it is that strength and, and their ability to be explosive skaters, to be able to separate um, so that they can show the gifts that they have both offensively. So never underestimating skill. It's, of course, the, the most important quality, but you've got to be able to also play and handle the physical game. Noah has size. What were your, what are your early impressions of him? Yeah, Noah is, uh, he's, a, he's a big, tall, lanky kid. He, uh, I've watched a little bit of video on Noah. He moves across the blue line really well, seems to have uh, some nice hands and some sense and shoot the puck. Uh, he's a very smart person. He did, uh, I think, at a 93% average and has done really well uh, in his academic, their top academic player in Lethbridge that they've seen for a long time. So um, he's a, a pretty intelligent kid both on and off the ice, and he, he'll be an interesting project. He's got, a, again, the size that uh, you're hearing about, and so something we don't have in the organization with a prospect. So he's an intriguing guy, and, and he's also from Saskatchewan, so I guess <laughs> I like him. <laughs> it feels like, I know I'm giving a lot here, but it yeah. feels like VT has never really hit the, the highs that he did in his freshman year. How do you get his game kind of back to where it was? Yeah, we've talked a lot with VT about just consistency uh, day in and day out um, at the college level and just his commitment to the game both, you know, on and off the ice. So he started to really, I think, understand what, you know, what the qualities are to be a pro hockey player, the training, uh, taking in interest in his own development in his own game, which is something we encourage the prospects to really do is understand who you are as a player. Um, and then I think also for him it's a little bit of confidence at that level that he can make an impact, play less on the perimeter, get through the middle of the ice. He's got a pretty good shot, so when he can get it off, it's often effective, but uh, it's been a slow, a slow go for him. If I may, uh, how is the uh, impact of Kyle Lewis moving on affecting you or your role? Well, I, uh, so far I, I, my role is, is the same. Um, I loved working with Kyle. He's uh, first off uh, an incredible human being, a good person, and I think we all would say that here in Toronto and uh, certainly was great to me and just being able to manage the demands of medical school and um, everything that goes with uh, what I was doing. But, um, you know, this is, the, it's a business and, you know, it's the nature of the business. I often say you are hired to be fired in the NHL and uh, it's very hard when you get close to people you, to see them go. But uh, with a new change coming in with Brad, I, being from Calgary, know, didn't know Brad well, but a li you know a little bit of Brad through the years and uh, you know a really uh, good start with him, good person to work with. Um, I think he's he's bringing a, a little different twist, but uh, you know a, a change sometimes is is good and it's uh, it's good for everyone to uh, adapt and move forward and that's part of. Uh, Part of winning and being in this business, change is inevitable, and it's uh, how you go with it. But so far, uh, it's been an enjoyable transition, I guess. And um, but I have a lot of respect for Kyle as well.